hello, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Hello, hello, how do you do? How do you do today? Hello, hello, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Hello, hello, how do you do? How do you do today? Pat, pat, pat your lap, pat your lap, pat your lap, pat, pat, pat your lap. How do you do today? Walk, walk, walk around, walk around, walk around, walk, walk, walk around. How do you do today? Ba 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 Tap 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 your head tap your head tap your head tap 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 your head How do you do today? Ba 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 Tap, tap, tap your toes, tap your toe, tap your toe, tap, tap, tap your toe. How do you do today? Ba 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 I think I made that one up about 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, they're all over the place. They're on the internet now. Um, you don't really have to do the digging that one had to do back in the stone ages of early childhood music and early childhood education for that matter. What I'm going to do is I'll just take you through some ideas. I'd also like to talk a little bit about some, some research that's uh, going on. And it's just literally a smattering because it's so deep. Uh, once one gets into it, um, there's a lot that informs what's going on today in, um, in early childhood music, music education, particularly with an approach named Music Together. Has anyone ever heard of Music Together? Okay. Well, Music Together is, is the only uh, approach that's out there right now as far as early childhood goes that uh, the developers have been doing work, not just quantitative work over the last 35 years, but qualitative work over the last 35 years um, in looking at how young music, how young children acquire music. So, um, and, and there are uh, classes that are offered locally, um, Music Together classes, and there are um, some schools that have uh, exclusive, uh, uh, exclusively have teachers who do Music Together in the classroom. Uh, from JK through grade three. So it's a very useful approach to look into if you're interested in doing that. And they do, they do uh, weekend workshop things for people um, to get them up to speed. And they've got materials that they've been developing and refining over the years. So it's a, a very full, rich uh, approach to teaching um, uh, preschool through grade three music. I'd like to start over here. And unfortunately, I, the clickers don't work with the new Macs anymore. Um, so, and I tried to get an app, but um, I'm not getting it working yet. So, um, just some, some ideas to share um, about child's innate music aptitude, music environments, and the, appro the uh, importance of the environment, uh, how it needs to be a person-centered approach, the roles of direct and indirect instruction in the early re years, and emerging brain research. And I think about this whole holistic approach to teaching music and working, um, playing music with young children as, as the embodied person actively engaged in the world, the young child actively engaged in the world. Typically, and I was going to play games with you, I was going to throw a whole bunch of instruments in the center of the floor and watch you all walk around them. Because if I, as you know, with a group of preschoolers or kindergarten or grade one, two, three kids, if they saw a pile of instruments in the middle of the floor, what would they do? <laughs> They'd start playing. So I thought it would be funny to watch you all sit down and just kind of, you know. <laughs> but I didn't do that. Um, I do have instruments we'll get into. So um, in a bit. 
So music aptitude or ability is innate, it's inborn, and it's embodied in something called audiation, which is a mental or cognitive activity. All humans audiate. Audiation is the ability to conceptualize music in the mind when the sound isn't physically present. Or if the sound is going on, you're not only hearing it, you're thinking the music. So you can think of a metaphor for audiation is that uh, audiation is to music what thought is to language. Okay? Think about it. Okay. Um, ideal development takes place in rich music environments in home and school. So you can go all the way back to 1990 with uh, work by uh, Doxy and Wright. And that's one of the earliest um, studies that looked at correlational research between music aptitude as measured by something called the primary measures of music audiation and um, uh, uh, IQ as measured by the Metropolitan Tests. And they were the first ones that started this, this research over the last 26 years, I guess it is now, wow, um, where they were able to show that there is a strong correlation between rhythm music aptitude and mathematics ability. So that's where this body of work started and over the last, well, going then to Fran Rauscher and Gordon Shaw and my own work and many, many, many others, um, this correlational research has been ongoing uh, over the last 26 years. Any questions or did I see? Okay, um, so um, there is a lot of brain research and I just picked out a few that are of interest to me but there are tons. Uh, uh, Schlaug, Gottfried Schlaug is, is one of the big names in this area um, and he's particularly interested in how music activity changes the brain especially when one is learning to play a music instrument at a young age. And also found that audiation abilities are correlated with language related skills. So it's not, and I, I'm very careful about this, I'm not going to tell you that music makes you smarter. But what I can tell you is, is that music changes the brain. And particularly engagement with instrumental music, and let me show you, share the next slide with you, this is like woo! voodoo almost, right? Um, <laughs> looking at the differences between children who pl play piano and, and play strings, violin, between the ages of five to seven, uh, musically active and musically naive children, you can see the difference in brain development not only uh, between kids who do music and kids who don't, but adults who are non-musicians and adults who are musicians in terms of what's going on with the brain. Um, Schlag also did studies in uh, going back into the 1990s looking at things like increases in gray matter by in engaging with instrumental music and all this stuff has been, um, um, how, how can I put this, uh, multi multiplicatively corroborated. In other words, more and more of the same and same studies, slightly different takes on it, have been done since the mid-90s. And so I think we're pretty certain now to say that music changes the brain. Now whether or not that makes you smarter is a whole other story and I don't want to go there. Um, so this audiation thing is very, very important to me. And I'm really pleased to see that not only Schlag, but there's a, a gentleman at the University of Heidelberg in Germany, Peter Schneider, who's been doing work with this in the last 15 years. And he's even more closely aligned in looking at relationship between audiation and certain areas of the brain that actually change and uh, also IQ scores and it's all tied in with work that they're doing in Germany now where every child from kindergarten through grade three in certain cities in Germany can go and say I want my child to have violin lessons or I want my child to have piano lessons and they'll give them free lessons okay one two three give you the keyboard give you the violin and there you go. And so that's how strongly they feel about this kind of work. So the Germans are way ahead of everyone else in, in engaging with this kind of stuff. Um, so this audiation thing enables us to play with music and get engaged with music. 
Audiation abilities fluctuate during early childhood and it may be developed up to age nine. And this is also consistent now when we look at this brain research where they're able to show that certain things happen to the brain and parts of the spinal cord that connect to the brain, myelination, um, where they show that, that, that it actually um, is something that slows down in terms or actually stops in terms of growing or changing. So, and it correlates also not only with this music audiation leveling off at age nine, but also second language acquisition and thinking in second language by age nine. It's very interesting work that you can find. Um, so it's all about the environment. It's so important and there are tons of environmental music studies that have gone on over the last 25, 30 years. Uh, if you just look up music environment research, you'll find all sorts of work. So Googling is brilliant these days. And you can read all about it. Accompaniment and non-accompaniment and singing achievement. There is evidence that non-accompaniment facilitates the learning of songs. So you'll see a lot of what I do. I might start off playing guitar or I might start off with a pitch to start the song and then I'll move away from the accompaniment. But sometimes I'll go and sit at the piano or sometimes I'll sit at the guitar or sometimes I'll sit with a xylophone and I'll accompany the singing. So, but you don't need an instrument as long as you're consistent with the pitches that you use to sing a song. Um, we'll do a lot, everything that I have written here we're going to be doing. Uh, singing voice research, two and three pitch stepwise patterns, songs without words. So just now with this hello song, I took the song, the words away. Why did I take the words away? So that you could focus on the melody and the rhythm. Okay? So that's the main reason. A mixture of songs with and without words seems to be a benefit to older children, and that's the work that uh, Gil Martin and Levinowitz have done, and they're the ones who have been working in the music together approach. So I mentioned this language and music uh, acquisition metaphor. Music is not a language, but it is acquired in a manner and a context similar to those in which language is learned. So it's as it is important to have a child immersed in language, in a rich environment where parents are speaking um, either one or two languages. Um, similarly, similarly, music needs the same kind of a rich, uh, vibrant environment to get the child engaged um, on all levels, all the time. Not just sitting in the back seat of the car listening to Raffi uh, CDs, but actually actively engaged with singing and playing with your child. Um, um, and also this similarity in, in, in language acquisition with a babble stage. There is a babble stage in music. This was identified back in the early 1980s, um, work by John Hollihan and uh, a number of others. And um, so it is a variant of this notion of mother ease that we have in language acquisition. This is all stuff that you folks have studied in language ed, right? Yes? No? Am I speaking Japanese? <laughs> yes? No? You, you have. Okay, so some of you know what I'm talking when I say mother ease, okay? So there's a whole rich body of literature uh, going back to the late 1970s. Um, Rachel Stark, who was at Peabody, uh, D.K. Aller, um, and a number of others who looked at um, um, vocal, really early vocalizations of young children, um, uh, one week old to eight weeks old, and how those sounds, those vocal sounds that the baby makes from gurgling to uh, cooing are correlated with actual syllables, vowels, consonant vowel combinations, etc. Um, and similarly, we've learned that music develops the same way with young children, and it's very interesting. So this is why it's important to have this constant exposure. It's an elemental form of play in music, so just like a mother or father will play with the young child with vocal sounds, or, or any number of things that one does when they want to be silly with a, a little one here, um, the, or imitating the sounds that the child makes, that's very important as well, uh, vocal sounds, um, to bring an awareness to the child that not only are they to imitate what you're doing when you're singing, but you imitate what they sing, or the sounds that they make as well. Um, 
So these are all part of fundamental music activities. So um, we have problems with media because mass media in particular, um, what is considered as music is very narrowly defined and, and very narrowly performed. So there are dangers to that and digital tools and games and, um, and uh, for that matter, even radio and the internet and television. Um, you've got to be very selective of what you're looking for and I can give you some directions on that. Um, but best thing said is that some music instruction is better than none at all. Um, so whatever you can muster up, and I'm going to give you some ideas the uh, remainder of this uh, session, whatever you can muster up and you can put together on your own um, is, is better than nothing at all. And in fact, it is an ongoing project. Uh, you're all right about ready to step into the profession, and hopefully many of you get a job teaching next year. Um, hit the ground running, right? Uh, whether it's TOCing or a full-time teaching gig somewhere, uh, you know that there are many strands to the, curric to the curriculum and um, uh, while you may be very strong in some areas, other areas you need to work on over time. And music is one of those things that even for a music practitioner, a specialist, I would say it takes five or six years of full-time K-7 through seven music teaching before a person kind of gets to know what they're doing. It takes a while. Um, and a lot of that has to do with repertoire and getting immersed in uh, all this kind of stuff very deeply that I'm just skimming the surface of. Um, but the, the most important thing is, is this um, um, working on singing and moving to music. S moving to a steady beat and singing in tune are your primary objectives from birth through age nine because if a child can't move to a steady beat by age nine and can't sing in tune, it is very difficult to teach them how to sing in tune and move to a steady beat after age nine. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. So, um, that all said, any comments or questions about any of this? Because now we're going to start doing. So everything I've kind of touched on here, we're going to do it in, in activities. When you'd like to stop, just raise your hands or just say, Peter, could you explain something or could you do that again or whatever? Um, just stop me. Comments, questions, concerns? No? Okay, you're ready to jump right in, so to speak? I'm going to start in like grade two and three and then I'm going to back up. Okay, rather than starting with what one does with very young children, because I'd like to show you what is possible with grade two, three kids, linguistically and musically speaking, but then try and explain why it doesn't work with kindergarten children, okay? So um, it's a little backwards, but uh, it, it will make sense, I hope. So here's a tune. And uh, typically I'd have a flip chart with paper and uh, we could make this a quote-unquote integrated lesson where we'd use vocabulary to help us remember how the song goes. But for now, I'm just going to teach you the song. This is an additive song, what we call additive songs, and there are numerous additive songs in the repertoire. And this one goes like this. I've a pair of oxen, oxen, oxen to cut noodles, noodles. Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Wonders never cease. Oh, wonders never cease. What's that song about? Who can raise their hand and tell me? Come on, anybody. Make pretend you're, five, uh, make pretend you're seven years old. What's that song about? Oxen cutting noodles, right. Oxen cutting noodles. So let's write that down. So we write down oxen cutting noodles. So I'll sing a line and you sing it back. I've a pair of oxen, oxen. Ready, sing. I've a pair of oxen, oxen. My turn. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. Let's sing both of those lines together. My turn first, then your turn. I've a pair of oxen, oxen. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. Ready, sing. I've a pair of oxen, oxen. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. My turn. 
Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? And then the last line is, wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. Wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. Good, let's do the last two lines together, I'll sing them first. Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. Sing! Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. Good, let's do the whole song. Now, if you're doing this with kids on a regular basis, a couple times a week, it's pretty fast, right? How many of you are struggling with the words or the music right now? Be honest, that's what I expect. It's expected, okay? Because you're not into the routine. It's not something that's natural for you. But teaching a song using a phrase approach, a rote phrase approach, sing the first phrase, have the, sing the whole song first. Talk about the song, sing the whole song again. Ask questions about the song. Then sing the first phrase, children sing it back. Sing the second phrase, children sing it back. Put the first two phrases together. Everyone sings it back. Then do the third phrase, the fourth phrase, pull it all together. That's a quick and dirty way to teach the song. The other way to do it is just do the whole, fr the whole song approach. Just jump in and try and do it. But this way, if I would like to pinpoint certain things about later on, particularly in grade two and three, when I can ask, and I'm using vocabulary-like, vocabulary how many phrases are there in the song? So how would I teach you how many phrases there are in the song in grade two or three? Every time I sing a musical sentence or phrase, I'm going to draw a line across my body like this. So watch. <clears throat> I've a pair of oxen, oxen, ready, sing. I've a pair of oxen, oxen, here's the next phrase. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. Oxen who cut noodles, noodles. My turn. Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Do you mean you've never seen an ox cut noodles by the oodles? Wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. Wonders never cease, oh, wonders never cease. How many musical sentences are, or phrases are there in the song, Wonders Never Cease? Who can raise their hand and tell me? Four. How did you know? How many I did this four times. Right. That's the typical second or third grade response. Okay? So believe it or not, this is an advanced concept for children. This is tough. We can't start in kindergarten with this. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we need to do in pre-K or JK in kindergarten in grade one before we get to a point where we start pulling songs apart and talking about them in terms of teaching to the elements of music and concepts and how we put together the elements of music. Okay? So. Um, with a song like Oxen, uh, or Wonders Never Cease, the next uh, verse would be, I've a pair of bears, bears, bears who sweep the rooms, rooms. Do you mean you've never seen a bear sweep rooms without a broom? And us cut noodles by the oodles, wonders never cease. Oh, wonders never cease, right? So we add bears, and then we could add goats. And then we could add birds, baking cakes, etc., etc. So. If we write down oxen, noodles, bears, sweep rooms, goats, wheel children, uh, birds, bake layer cake, etc., etc., then we have the mnemonic, or not even mnemonic, it's actually a uh, visual vocabulary device to help us remember the order in which the song is repeated and added to. Okay? So that's, that's a tough song. That's why it's grade three, all right? Here's something, let me back up. Let's back up to grade one. Here we go. I'll sing the song for you. This, I'd like you to listen to the words, and I'd like you to tell me what the song is about. It goes like this.
I'll take you riding in my car, car. I'll take you riding in my car, car. Take you riding in my car, car. I'll take you riding in my car. Brum brum chicka chicka brum 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 chicka chicka brum 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 chicka chicka brum brum. I'll take you riding in my car. <coughs> I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'll take you riding in my car. Beep, 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 beep. I'll take you riding in my car. Who can tell me what that song is about? Uh, come on, everybody's shouting out at this point. What's the song about? Riding in a car, right. What else can you tell me about the song? One thing. The sound. The sound it makes. What sound does it make? It beeps. The song, yeah, it beeps. What part of the car beeps? The horn. What other sound does the song, was, does the car make? The engine, yeah, it's a really old engine. That's why it goes brum, brum, chicka, chicka, brum, brum. Can we say that together? Ready, go. Broom, broom, chicka, chicka, broom, broom. Very good. Let's start with the last part of the song, beeping the horn. This is the easiest part because the words are beep, 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 I'll take you riding in my car. Let's do it again. Ready, go. Beep, 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 I'll take you riding in the car. Very good. Let's sing the whole song from the beginning. If you remember the words, sing along. If not, then kind of pick them up as we go along. So this is a holistic, a whole song approach. Okay? So it goes like this. I'll take you riding in my car, car. I'll take you riding in my car, car. I'll take you riding in my car, car. I'll take you riding in my car. Broom, broom, chicka, chicka, broom, broom. Broom, broom, chicka, chicka, broom, broom. Broom, broom, chicka, chicka, broom, broom. I'll take you riding in my car. I'm going to let you blow the horn. I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'm gonna let you blow the horn, horn. I'll take you riding in my car. Get ready to beep the horn. Can I see you with the steering wheels here? Ready? How are you gonna beep the horn? Show me. Beep, 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 I'll take you riding in my car. So the song, so I would joke around and say this car is so old that the horn gets stuck sometimes, right? So the children really like holding the horn for a long time. There's a reason for that. Okay, so what other kinds of things could you do in K1? Well, <clears throat> there are a lot of old chestnuts. Um, bum, 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 bum. Could I have a bunch of people come up here and hold hands? Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Very good, thank you. So just listen to the way I sing it first, the first time through, so you hear what, the way it's sung. And then I'd like you to join in with me. It goes like this. Here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. All on a Saturday night. You put your one hand in. You take your one hand out. You give your hand a shake, 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 and turn yourself about. Oh, here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. All on a Saturday night. You put your one foot in. You take your one foot out. You give your foot a shake, 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 and turn yourself about. Oh, here we go, ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. Ba 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 I put my whole self in. I put my whole self out. I give myself a shake, 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 and turn myself about. Whoa! Here we go, Luby Lou. Here we go, Luby Lou. 
Here we go, Ruby, look, all on a Saturday night. Good, okay, so I interject a lot of silly things, right? <laughs> Thank you, have a great, have a seat. That's great. So, with a song like that, I take the words away, okay? I'm not concerned about right hand, left hand. I'm just concerned about putting hands in, taking hands out, putting feet in, putting feet, feet out. Later, I can add directional things like left and right, okay? I'm concerned about teaching how to sing in tune and how to move. The other thing I was doing, and I didn't say, okay, now everyone keep a steady beat with me, but what was I doing when we were moving around? We were walking to the steady beat, and we, what else were we doing to help that? We were holding hands, and I was giving the beat to the circle. Okay? So that is very helpful. Where does one learn how to do that? Where does one see that in, in reality? Well, if you look at African cultures, if you look at Middle Eastern cultures, when, when people are dancing and they're holding hands, there's a lot of this stuff going on, right? So this is how world cultures teach the little ones. I remember being a little kid and going to Greek dances. I'm Greek, by the way. Going to Greek dances and just holding on for dear life and getting dragged around, right? <laughs> now, did I immediately start stepping to the steady beat? No. Did I immediately start pumping to the steady beat? No. But I can tell you after a year or two of getting in and doing it, or even with my dad, God bless his soul, um, who used to dance in the house and sing all the time, uh, put music on and start dancing, he'd get me up dancing with him, right? It was like, well, this is what we do in the household. So it's really important to do this in the home with the children and to encourage the parents to do it in the home with the children and then to bring that into the classroom, okay? So this kind of a looby loo thing where, in, you know, you could do it with children as young as age three, with and without words, with these kinds of simple motions, with and without the parents, if you happen to be engaged in some of the, the preschool classes like kinder music and music together, which I mentioned, the parents come to the class with the children. Okay, and this is where the parents are actually doing the same things and they're encouraging, the, the instructors encourage parents to take that home and do it at home with children. Do you have any questions or comments about any of this so far? There are a gazillion songs like Luby Lou. Can you name another one? Anyone? Hokey Pokey, absolutely. Who said Hokey Pokey? <laughs> All right, Hokey Pokey, absolutely. There are dozens. All right? Um, so you can do them all, and you can do them all the same way. Because it's not repetitive. They're all different. <laughs> okay? And for a child, you need to think about it this way. For a child to, to learn the, the basic notion of steady beat, you need to experience it in a lot of different contexts. Not just in one with one song. Just because you can do it one time in one song, it doesn't mean that that skill is going to be transferred in a number of contexts. So this is why you need the big repertoire. Okay, so absolutely. Excellent. Um, there are a gazillion short rhymes, short poems, and chants in the early childhood literature. Um, I have a bunch of books in my office, but you know some of the old standards that you can go to are the Opie Rhyme Book, um, these were collected by, I forget the names of the people, they're Opie, um, um, it's a husband and wife that collected these in the late 1800s, and uh, basically it's your mother goose, right, everything. And then here's another mother goose, so you need at least a couple of them because they don't necessarily have the same material in them, all right? And uh, lots of times, um, it's as you would do in any other ki kind of setting, reading the poem and having a look at the, the illustrations and telling the story and asking questions, but also then using the rhyme to do little things like what we're going to do now. So here's a silly rhyme that came out of some old English rhyme book a gazillion years ago. Um, and ha everyone stand up. It goes like this. 
Seesaw, sacred down, which is the way to happy town? One hand up, one hand down, this is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacred down, which is the way to happy town? Both hands up, both hands down, this is the way to happy town. Seesaw, happy town. Oh, sorry, seesaw, sacred down. Seesaw, sacred down, which is the way to happy town? One foot up, one foot down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Uh, what, which is the way to happy town? One hip up, one hip down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Which way? Any ideas? Belly up. Belly up. Belly up, belly down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Which way? One elbow up, one elbow down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Think. Oh, oh. One ear up. One ear down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw. Good down. Which is the way to happy town? Kids think of some really funny ones. What? One knee up, one knee down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw. Good down. Which is the way to happy town? Which way? One nose up, one nose down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Fingers. Ah, one finger up, one finger down. This is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down. Which is the way to happy town? Which way? One toe up. Oh, how are we going to do this? Show me. One toe up. One toe down, this is the way to happy town. Seesaw, sacra down, which is the way to happy town? Which way? One shoulder up. One shoulder up, one shoulder down. This is the way to happy town. Now, do you think children would be standing in one spot? No. No. May pretend you're five or six years old, but you get the idea. Good. So, all the things that you can move up and down. Could you make a list of all the things we can move up and down? Absolutely. Could we use it again later for another activity? Absolutely. Okay, so if you want to think in terms of how then you can quote unquote integrate this, but I think about this in terms of music and movement. That's what we're doing right now. So, movement. Really important to get kids up moving during the day. I see these kinds of activities in the Luby Loo, circle games, play party dances, and even songs as being core to what most teachers do in, in grades K and 1, and even JK, K and 1, which is calendar time. First thing, at the beginning of the day, first half hour or whatever. It's not just about looking and, you know, putting the nice sticker on the day of the week and et cetera. It's about doing this full-blown, getting the kids in and getting them up and rowdy and getting some of the yayas out because some of them are itchy and they don't want to sit in the same spot in the room and then, you know, and so what is that telling you if they don't want to sit in the same spot? They need to get up and move around. So it's our responsibility to get them up and moving around. Right? And that way, if they get it out of their system, then it's okay. Let's have a seat now. Now we can relax. So, I'm going to back up way back before I go fast forward again to grade two, grade three. I'm gonna, I could show some video of me working with young children, but I think it's better if we do it instead of show it. So, um... Uh, we'll do it from right here. Bum, 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 bum. So I'm always thinking about how am I going to start a song. So if I know the song starts on F, I'm always going to sing it off of F. Now I'm going to stop explaining things after this, but I thought since I'm starting like this and I'm singing like this and I do this all the time with young children so they get a sense of pitch center because if you don't have a sense of where the resting tone is and what the pitch center is, then you'll never learn how to sing in tune. 
So if you don't consistently sing the song, every time you do the song, singing it from the same pitch center, it's like pronouncing words differently every time you teach a word or every time you speak to the children. If I spoke to you and said, well, today I'm going to talk like this to you and this is the way that the English language sounds and this is the way we should speak. The kids would look at me like, what? You know? Or if I use another accent every time, that would really be confusing to children. So it's similarly in music, you need to start off with the same pitch. It goes like this. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Ba 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 Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Ba 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 ba. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Ba 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 ba. What else can we do? Clap your hands. Oh, now, 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 this is a good one. I'm going to stop a second. So, crossing the midplane for children and J anything younger than kindergarten and younger. This is difficult. You will not hear kids keep the steady beat all the time when they cross the midplane, clapping the steady beat. So I would say tapping. So if you hold one hand, and this is something you teach, hold one hand, and here's how you clap. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this, just like me. Ba, 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 ba. So even I stopped a second because I wanted to assess and make a comment on something. Just because you can do this, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to step at the same time and keep the steady beat. So children are going to have as much difficulty, if not more. So there's two coordination things you're asking children to do. So either do this or do this. Okay, but you'll, if you just watch, you'll see there's some of the steps aren't quite there and you know, so you're actually literally taking it one step back, <clears throat> one or the other. Um, so there you go, what else can we do? Everybody do this, do this, of course. Everybody do this just like me. And if you were my class, I would say, what is your name? So I'd say, just like Tom. So we would sing, everybody do this just like Tom. And then next one would be Michelle. Michelle, what do you want to do, Michelle? Oh, everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like Michelle. Ba 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 What else do we want to do, Priscilla? Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like Priscilla. What else can we do, Mia? Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like Mia. And what else can we do? What's your name first? Charmaine. Charmaine. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like Charmaine. Very good. Have a seat, everybody. Very nice. Or no, don't have a seat. Stay where you're at. Stand where you're at. Thank you. All right, I'm going to get in the elevator down at the bottom floor here. So come on down to the bottom floor. Let's push the button. Press the button at the top to go down. Press the button to go up again. Press the button to go down. Let's go up one more time. Hey, I see a fire engine over there. It's going away. Fire flew bust down. Okay, 
good. Usually somebody looks out and says, there's no fire engine, Mr. G. <laughs> That's the typical children's response. You'll, you'll get that, too. OK, good. Let's press the button and go back down. Very good. Stay where you're at. <clears throat> Let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Dance, listen to me sing the song, Dancing Bear. And you can do the motions with me. Dancing Bear, Dancing Bear, do a little dance for me. Dancing Bear, Dancing Bear, do a little dance for me. Stretch up high, crouch way down, pat your lap like a circus clown. Sway to the left, sway to the right, that bear can dance all night. Very good. What's that song about? Bears. Dancing bears, right. What do they do? when they're dancing. They stretch up high, then they do crouch way down, and then what do they do? Pat your lap like a circus clown, then what do they do? Sway to the left, sway to the right, and then what does the bear do? That bear can dance all night. Very good. Okay, so now let's go through the whole song again. Right, so we go through these songs just like that. Very good. My turn first. Listen to me. Ba, ba, ba. Saying that, have a seat. Oh, let's try another one. Oh, no, let's do it this way. Bum, bum, bum. Listen, boys and girls, I'm going to sing a song for you. I'm going to do the actions. And I'd like you to do the actions too. But all I'd like you to sing when I sing all around the kitchen. And you're going to sing cock a doodle doodle doo. Cock a doodle doodle doo. So every time I sing all around the kitchen, all around the kitchen, cock a doodle doodle doo. All around the kitchen, cock a doodle doo. Now you stop right still, cock a doodle doodle doo. Put your hands on your head, cock a doodle doodle doo. Do your arms like so, cock a doodle doodle doo. And you go down low, cock a doodle doodle doo. All around the kitchen. Okay, let you know the song. Get up. Here we go. So all you have to do for today is sing cock-a-doodle-doodle-doo or cock-a-doodle-doodle-doo. Here we go, and when we're going to go around the kitchen, so this is the kitchen. There's one rule in this game, no bumping chickens and no bumping roosters. Okay, so do, are you ready? Here we go. All around the kitchen, cock-a-doodle-doodle-doo. All around the kitchen, now you stop right still. Put your hands on your arms. Do your arms like so. All around the kitchen. Cock a doodle All around the kitchen. Stop right still. Do your head like so. And you go down low. All around the kitchen, cock a doodle doodle doo. All around the kitchen, now you stop right still. Put your hands on your hips, flap your wings like so. Do your head like so, and you go down low. All around the kitchen, all around the kitchen. All around the kitchen, 
all around the kitchen. And stop, very nice, have a seat. <laughs> now you're all blackmailed. It's all on tape. You can't say a bad word about me. On my knee, there is a flea. Now he's climbing up on me, past my tummy, past my nose, on my head, where my hair grows. On my head there is a flea. Now he's climbing down on me, past my tummy, past my knee, on my shoe, take that, you flea. <laughs> What's that about? So we go through a whole conversation. What's that about? Okay. And so in doing the conversation, we can remember the order in which the words are spoken and just learn it holistically. But I'm going to go through it one more time with you. And we usually, I'll usually do an activity like this two or three times. Now this is very traditional and there are loads of these on the internet. They're called finger plays. Finger plays. You heard of finger plays? Yeah? Okay. So this is an oddball one. Start on the knee. Here we go and go up. On my knee there is a flea. Now he's climbing up on me. Past my tummy, past my nose. On my head where my hair grows. On my head there is a flea. Now he's climbing down on me. Past my tummy, past my knee. On my shoe, take that, you flea. Very nice. You want to do it one more time? Yeah! And we do it one more time, right? But that's enough for us. Okay. Um, we can do any number of things. We can do a song like... I'm going to sing a song. And I'll tell you right away, it's about a fireman. And, but I'd like you to listen to the story of the fireman and be able to tell me some things about the fireman. It goes like this. Fireman, fireman, we can't wait. There's a fire in apartment eight. Up the stairs he'll drag the hose. Count the steps as up he goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, when he squirts the fire hose, out the fire goes. I knew that was going to happen, and you, because usually the, the children go, woo, what happened? Okay? So, go through the whole thing, ask, asking the children, what's the song about, blah, 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 okay, we won't do that here. What I will do, though, is I'm going to teach you the part where we go up the stairs. So here we go. It goes like this. <clears throat> and I'm going to do some motions with you, and you're going to do them with me. One, I'll do it first. You sing it back. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. Let's go up the stairs again from one. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep going. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. How many times do we go up the steps from one to twelve? Two times. Some children will say, that's twenty-four. I've had five-year-olds say that to me like, yeah, that's correct. That's twenty-four steps. That's spot on. But we don't have to do that right now. But we could count. You know, you could draw two sets of 12 stairs going up the, uh, going up two flights into an apartment building, and that's that. So, then the last part goes, when he squirts the fire hose, when he squirts the fire hose, out the fire goes, out the fire goes. Good, so let's sing the last part of the song with the counting. And then squirt in the fire hose, and then out the fire goes. It goes ready, one, two, three, ready and sing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When he squirts the fire hose, out the fire goes. Very nice. Then we'd sing the whole song. Okay? Good. Um, let's get up 
and do some more movement. Here, come on up. So how many of you know the story of Jack and Jill? I do, I do, I do. Okay, good, great, that's fantastic. Let's do Jack and Jill together and let's make up some motions with Jack and Jill as well. Okay, because Jack and Jill isn't just something we say sitting down, we can actually dramatize it. So let's make pretend we're going to go up the hill, Jack and Jill went up the hill, to fetch a pail of water, they're swinging the pail, Jack fell down, and broke his crown, that's the top of his head, and Jill came tumbling after. Here we go, ready, go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down ah! and broke his crown. Ah! And Jill came tumbling after. So I interject a few things, right? Let's do it again. Ready, go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down. Ah! and broke his crown, oh, and Jill came tumbling after. Very nice. Good. Well, you know, is that the whole story? Probably not. You're right. That's not the whole story. Very good. That's why you're a champ. Okay. So, when Jack and Jill got to the top of the hill to fetch the pail of water, how did they get the water? Does anybody know where they get the water from? They turn on a spigot. The well. They get it from the well. That's one place you could get it. How about a water pump? A water pump. I think Jack and Jill in my story have a water pump. So let's pump the water like this. Jack, Jill, pump the water. Jack, Jill, pump the water. Jack and Jill, pump the water. Pump the water, Jack and Jill. Very good. So they got the water in the buckets. So let's swing the water now. Jack and Jill, swing the water. Jack and Jill, swing the water. Jack and Jill, swing the water. Swing the water, Jack and Jill. So after swinging the water, what happens to the water? It's all over. Let's splash the water. Jack and Jill, splash the water. Jack and Jill splash the water. Jack and Jill splash the water. Splash the water, Jack and Jill. What else do you like to do with water? Drink. Drink, sure. Jack and Jill drink the water. Jack and Jill drink the water. Jack and Jill drink the water. Drink the water, Jack and Jill. And you know, they left the pump on. So the water's all over. It's so deep, we can swim in it. Let's go. Jack and Jill swim the water. Jack and Jill swim the water. Do you, Rick, do you move when you swim, or do you just stay in one spot? Let's, let's move. There we go. Jack and Jill, you're treading water? Good. Jack and Jill swim the water. I'm doing backstroke. Swim the water. Swim the water. Jack and Jill. Very good. And on and on. Have a seat. Ha ha. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. My turn first, and then your turn. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. And I would ask individual children to chant the pattern. So I could say, my turn first, and then, what is your name? Riley. Then Riley's turn. My turn first, then Riley's turn. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. Thank you, Riley. And we go along and, and have group and individual. So if I knew everyone's name, I would ask individuals to say, Tracy's turn. Ba, ba, ba. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so Tracy's going to improvise. And I would say, that's a nice improvisation, Tracy. <laughs> can, can you say, ba, ba, ba? Very nice, good. 
So children will give divergent answers, and that's good. That's improv. That's fine. Yeah, no. And sometimes you will get the divergent, and sometimes you will get, quote unquote, I could say ba 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 ba, and the child might just say ba ba. Hmm. Assessment. Note. Okay. Um, Priscilla, <laughs> her response was not the simple ba 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 pattern. She instead just gave the two macro beat response, and I'd be looking out for that in the future. Okay. I have diagnosed more hearing problems <laughs> with with doing pattern work and and. Tonal, tonal pattern, that's the vocal pattern and the chanting pattern work, then um, I should have, if I may say. Yeah, it's really interesting. So sometimes it is not an audiational problem, although if you think about it, when I say ba 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 ba, you have that moment to hear in your mind, to recreate the sound in your mind, mm -mm -mm -mm, and then you need to say, Ba, 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 ba. So there's three things happening, and it's almost simultaneous. And this is why audiation is so important, so very important. And to develop this, um, this uh, ability that we have um, is crucial. Uh, patterns are part of, uh, patterns are the small units that we work with, which are part of phrases, which are then part of songs, which are then part of larger compositions. So, bee, bee, bumblebee stung a bear upon his knee, stung a bear upon his snout, then the bear he gave a shout. <laughs> I like winding kids up. I do it on purpose, because they want to be able to go, ah, in school, right? And if you give them the opportunity to do that, they get it out of their system. Right? It's okay, now we're going to do the next thing. Because they know we're going to scream again maybe later. Trust Peter. It's okay to do that. Okay? It's okay to run around. And if I say free, if I'm doing, well, we'll do something later with the drum. Where I'll say, keep moving until you hear the drum stop. So I might go really fast. Doom, 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 and the kids are going, ah! and they'll stop. And they freeze. Right? And so just being able to release that kind of energy is important. So let's try BB Bumblebee again. It goes like this. Let's stand up. Here we go. BB, oh, sorry. BB Bumblebee stung a bear upon his knee, stung a bear upon his snout. Then the bear he gave a shout. Ah! Oh, good. Let's do it again. But this time. After the bee gets stung on the snout, he's going to run about. Okay? So as we run about, are we going to be quiet? No, because I'm in pain. I'm a big bear, and I've just gotten stung on the nose, on the snout, and I'm in pain. I'm going to let everyone know. Here we go. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a bear upon his knee, stung a bear upon his snout, then the bear he ran about. Ah! <laughs> and usually if I just do this, they'll stop too. Very good, I really like the way you did that. Have a seat. And we usually sit right on the floor where we're at. And we usually will end with a song. Let's sing the song together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's sing the song together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's, what other motion can we do? <clears throat> Let's march around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's march around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. What other motion can we do? Let's skip around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's skip around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's, what else can we do? What? Jumping jacks. Let's jumping jacks together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's jumping jacks together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. What other motion can we do? Let's hop around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Let's hop around together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. 
So after I've wound you up, it's let's zip our mouths together. Right? So you do that a few times, you know that means we're going to line up at the door. Right? So after winding the children up for 45 minutes, if I'm working as a specialist, then the ch teacher picks them up at the door and wondering what's going on, <laughs> right? While well, we're all very quiet. Um, that said, if they're in my room, then I just ask the children to we sit down at our desks, right? And there we go. Have a seat. So, um, The kinds of activities that we did in that little short burst kind of lesson, if you want to call it that, we did songs with words and songs without words. Songs like Everybody Do This had the emphasis on steady beat. Steady beat, steady beat, steady beat. Um, we did the vocalization, the elevator vocalization, to get us using our voice for singing rather than our speaking voice. Now, funny thing about speaking voice and singing voice, um, generally speaking, it is around this, this note C for young children. So this note C, this note C for young children, if they sing lower than this, then they're going to go into their speaking voice. So that's going to be your lowest pitch that you're going to sing. So this is why many of the songs in the early childhood literature are C and higher. And if they're songs that go down low and then go back up to the resting tone. They're usually in the key of F. So let's sing a song together. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Right? ba bum ba bum So that's where the resting tone is on F. <clears throat> um, Dancing Bear. Just a song that has some free motion to it. Not all motion has to do with steady beat because before you learn how to do motion or movement with your body parts to a steady beat, you need to also explore how the body parts work. <laughs> if you don't know that this does this, and this does this, then how are you going to do it to a steady beat? Very simple questions that people were asking 30 years ago, 35 years ago, 40 years ago. and. Um, taking it into these uh, lab classrooms with young children, preschools, um, and trying these things out in a variety of contexts with a variety of different activities, um, recognizing that children need both the free play, free motion, non-bound, non-steady beat motion, um, and eventually moving it to steady beat, so interjecting both, having opportunities for exploring the body in both ways. So there are a number of things I can do with, um, with steady beat that have to do with just doing something around some very basic concepts, fast and slow. So I, and I'm not going to tell you about fast and slow, but that's what it is. So if I was with children, I'd ask you all to stand up. And I'm going to play the drum, and I would like you to move the way that you think the drum sounds. So there's no right or no wrong here. The way that you think the drum sounds. Okay, here we go, ready? Just simple activities like that. And this, this comes out of a, a field of work um, that was developed by Rudolf Laban. There's a little bit written about it in that blue book that some of you got for the 308 class about Laban. But if you look up Rudolf Laban and Laban music, Laban music movement, 
uh, you'll find a lot of activities that go around things like fast and slow, tempo, heavy and light. So I can give you verbal cues. Sometimes you'll hear the music, the drum beat, sound heavy. Sometimes you'll hear the drum beat sound light. Be ready to show me heavy and light. Ready? Have a seat. Um, all Around the Kitchen is a great example of what's called a call and response song. So if you look up call and response songs on the internet, you're going to find probably a hundred. All right, so call and response meaning that there is an individual or group that calls and then there's an individual or group that responds. So in this case, the call was bum, 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 all around the kitchen, cock a doodle doodle doo. That was your response. And all you had to do was respond, cock a doodle doodle doo, cock a doodle doodle doo. So the call and response is a great way of teaching how to sing in tune to a very simple, holistic song with movement. Um, we did On My Knee There Is a Flea finger play. Many finger plays are not to a steady beat. They're just free, no steady beat, non-metrical is what they would be called. So I would consider On My Flea There Is a Knee to be one that's kind of wishy-washy and you're really just doing the motion and into the words and enjoying the only place where there is a beat is at the end. Take that, you flea. So on the word that, you're smacking your foot. Okay? Um, we did, uh, what else did we do? We did a song in there somewhere. Oh, um, what song did we do? I forget. Oh, we did Fireman. So the Fireman song, whole song, but I taught you the second part first, which is the easier part, the one where you count and go up the steps. Okay, that song... A lot of the songs I do, and I know some of you don't have the music background, but I'll do songs in major and minor. I'll do songs in a two feel, duple, or a three feel, triple. So the next thing that we did was Jack and Jill, which has a three feel. Um, and I did that on purpose, and we did the rhythm patterns with a three feel. Ba 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 ba, one two three one. Ba 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 ba. One two three, one two three, one two three, one two three. We only did two beat patterns. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba. Two beat patterns are easier than four beat patterns. Once the children are comfortable with two beat patterns in duple or two feel and triple, three feel, then you can move on to four beat patterns. Okay. Um, we did BB Bumblebee, which had more of a steady beat feel. BB Bumblebee stung a bear upon his knee, stung a bear, okay. Um, and then we did uh, Let's Sing a Song. So I try to alternate when I'm doing these kinds of things. None of the activities are more than three minutes. Now there were more than three minutes. Why do you think I would do it that way? And why, why do practitioners that are into doing this do it that way? A lot of it has to do with attention and capacity for attention, yeah. Anything else? I, I, pardon? No, attention and motivation. Yeah, I want to keep things moving. I want the kids engaged, right? So if I just keep things moving and have the activities changing, then the kids know that there's a lot to come. So there's no time really, in, in terms of classroom management, uh, I don't think it's just my personality. I think it's because the children know that I'm constantly moving, constantly going to challenge them with something else, that there's no time in between for you know, going off task or for punching um, Riley or hitting Riley with the mallet, right? Oh, right, doing something like that, which does go on. 
So what do you do if something like that happens, though? What would, what would you do if little Peter bonks Riley with a mallet? No comments? You did your, you did your, you did your classroom practica. You worked with K123, some of you. You never saw that happen at all. <laughs> First thing would do, uh, you would say, Peter, could you please give me the mallet? So then, and just reach for it. <laughs> Not yank it or grab it, just reach for it and, and gently pull it away. Put it on the floor and say, um, at this point, okay, I'd like you to play again, play the drum again, but it doesn't look like you're ready to play the drum. So when you're ready to play the drum and play the drum and not hit Riley, then it'll be your turn again. So if you'd like another turn, what do you need to do? What do you need to do if you'd like another turn, right? So that, I'm always trying to put it on the child. You know, what do you, what do you need to do if you're going to play the drum? How are you going to show us that you're capable of playing the drum? And by the way, could you say you're sorry to Riley? <laughs> Apologize to Riley? Isn't that, you know, what we should do? Because Riley, are you hurt? Because a, a little bit? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, in fact, I think, Riley, do you think you're feeling well enough to play the drum? I think so. Okay, see? So, and that's the other thing. Get Riley feeling a little bit better about what just happened. All right, so uh, you guys will figure it out. It'll, it'll, it'll take a few years to, to, you know, get into the psychology of the child and, um, and understand that really, you know, it's, it's keeping the activities going, keeping them engaged, and then understanding when something happens like that, okay, uh, first let's take a moment here and take a deep breath and not, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've walked by um, primary school classrooms and heard teachers lose it, um, and that's not necessary. It's not needed at all. So. Um, there are a number of things I did that had to do with single bilateral symmetrical movement and single predictable alternating movement and single asymmetrical and then single or, or double bilateral movement like this. And there's a reason for it. And that is, is that these motions and even stepping as thinking of it as single bilateral mo movement are easier than any motion or movement that has to do with crossing the midplane. So before a child, before you can move on to clapping to a steady beat like this, where you're eh, 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 you've got to see that the children are competent and comfortable keeping the steady beat bilateral symmetrically. So here's our single, sorry, that one's single, predictable movement. So just doing this as a steady beat rather than this is a steady beat. Try it. You'll be surprised at what you see when you're watching four, five, six-year-olds. If you see the child having trouble, stu uh, really struggling in grade two and grade three with keeping a steady beat like this, then you've got to go back to work on this kind of steady beat. It's not a matter of saying, no, do it again. <laughs> you can keep doing the same thing over and over and over and um, it's not going to work. It's like the child who hasn't learned how to uh, pronounce a glide, a, a Y yet. So you can say, no, it's pronounced yellow all you want. But the child's just going to look and you say, lello. <laughs> it's lello, right? Yeah, OK, lello, that's cool. Yeah, you're just not ready for the glide, that's all. So you can't correct by saying, no, yellow, no, yellow, or ooh, or you know, try and do some strange thing to show them this is how you pronounce the word. So anyway, these are, there are many things. We have a handout, right? Oh, you have the handout, OK. So there is a handout. And I, I just want to close by saying that, um, that Elliot Eisner, God rest his soul, um, spoke about something called connoisseurship. And I think about connoisseurship as a very broad concept. And 
I'm thinking about it in terms of noticings, noticing in the process of education. Um, Maxine Green had a closely related concept, and she just passed away a year or two ago, too. Um, Maxine Green spoke about awareness, about heightened <coughs> awareness, and how important it is for the teacher to have this heightened awareness. Um, people like Malguzi and, uh, and others in the Reggio uh, area speak about um, listening, how important it is to listen to children. And I think that if you think in terms of connoisseurship, awareness, and listening, listening deeply to children, that that's going to go a very, very long way. Because one can notice what is subtle, yet significant. So noticing that your children are keeping the steady beat bilaterally, symmetrically, is a very important thing. You may not think so, but it is. So they, um, Eisner relates to it as calling it making mountains out of molehills. <laughs> making mountains out of molehills. This is a huge feat for a five-year-old to get to that point where they can keep the steady beat or to get to that point where they can sing a steady tune. You noticed, uh, Tom, um, it might be something you might want to work on. The rest of you are women, so you don't have this issue. But for a man singing with his regular singing voice, Right? Singing, dancing bear, dancing bear, or singing, dancing bear, dancing bear. I frequently will use my child's voice, or uh, some people refer to it as countertenor, and others refer to it as falsetto. I use it as my child's voice, so I will frequently use that singing voice if I hear that the children are having trouble with my male singing voice. Um, I also will use a recorder, the little toot toot recorder, to play simple melodies or to play tonal patterns because that has a very pure, clear tone. And for teachers, male and female, who have difficulty singing tonal patterns in tune, working with a recorder, just playing simple two and three pitch patterns. <laughs> Little patterns like that on the recorder will take you an hour to learn how to play. Um, that would be very helpful in work in doing tonal pattern work with children. Um, so this art of appreciation, the art of noticing, enabling you to notice things that you would not ordinarily see, hear, or be aware of in the classroom. Th uh, this is key for me, and uh, I I know that you're going off now. How many of you got gigs? How many of you got jobs? Pardon? Oh, oh, some of you are already teaching. Oh, way to go. Okay, yeah. Um, so if you're already in there, I would really look for this, this uh, music together, uh, these workshops that are being done. I think they're very, very, very helpful. Um, and like I said, the materials that they give you are very rich. So I don't know how much they cost, but you get... It's almost like buying a subscription and you get materials coming at you on a regular basis. And there is a, a group of teachers um, that get together and they have workshops. Some of the schools, like I know I do work with Collingwood up in West Van, and Collingwood has um, all of their preschool teachers, their early child, their JK through uh, grade one people um, engaging with that now. And uh, it's been quite effective for them. So, any comments, questions, as we wrap it up? Um, no, I don't know of any public school districts. You mean like having? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and and uh, and we had the the little music course in the program cut from thirty nine hours to twenty two hours as many of you know. So you're doing 22 hours. Not it's not just music, it's PE, language, math, etc. So, um, um, yeah, there are people like myself who have issues uh, with that, but uh, that doesn't matter. Um, all I can say is coming back and doing um, uh, grad work, doing summer coursework, doing diploma work, looking out for workshops, um, and courses. Um, if people twist my arm, maybe I'll do a full-blown course that would be over 13 weeks, three hours a week, 
where we'd really take things apart and develop repertoire and people would put together. When I've taught courses like this years past, um, one of the things is to have teachers put together portfolios and have you pull together songs, chants, patterns, um, and all sorts of activities and put together a portfolio for the grade level that you teach. So that's really important. And even if you're just doing it as a teacher, not even, but if you're doing this as a teacher now, to have that set of materials that you can go back to. Um, children like doing the same songs and activities. You know, I usually will do an, a, a set of activities like I shared with you, a dozen to 15 activities, and then on a weekly basis sub in one, two, three new things, depending on the group and how fast they devour the activities. I'll sub in new things, but I'll keep some of the old stuff in there too, because familiar is good. <laughs> familiar is fine. The other thing is that you mark it, music together from zero to five, and what happens when children come to school, they're like, that's for babies. That's not for us, because they frequently go and do that, but I'm glad to hear that maybe they will well, they have been doing it for a long time, yeah. Because right now, zero to five, that's how marketed to parents, and the course is usually about 150 175 for one child, and then the... Oh, you're talking, well, wait, 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 you're talking about, you're talking about the, the, the sessions for children and parents, completely different. Yeah, Dep and it depends on what the teacher is doing. If the teacher is working, so in, in other words, um, there are these preschool music classes that are out there. Yeah. You probably so see them, right? Okay. So, uh, and so you can either have a group of for 18 months, 24 months, 36 months, 48 months, etc., 60 months. So, uh, and parent and child come. Sometimes the same parent comes every week, sometimes a different parent comes. But um, it's an interactive circle, and it's the activities, and the children do these things. And depending on whether or not it's a mixed group, I mean, there are all sorts of variables and factors into how it works or how effectively or ineffectively it might work in a particular setting. Um, there was a, a woman who did it here at the barn for a number of years, and she was very, very effective. And um, I, I thought, I went and observed her a number of times, and I was very impressed with the work she did. Um, but for the courses that teachers take, it's a different thing. And it is geared toward up, up to um, grade three. They do have materials. Yeah? Um, could you go over that sequence, that movement, you know, you talk about the symmetrical and the Yeah, so for on like your handout, kids. on your handout, there's okay. some of that on there, I believe. And the name that to look for is Weikert, W-E-I-K-E-R-T, Phyllis Weikert. She taught at the University of Michigan for many years, and um, she owns uh, High Scope Press, okay. which I, I think they, they do a lot more than movement materials now. High Scope is for a whole bunch of early childhood teaching and learning materials. Um, so, um, and she's got a number of, of, of things that she's done, not only books for the teacher with the instructions and the theoretical background and some of the research, but also the activities and uh, CDs that go along with all of these music activities. So she'll do something very simple. One, one, another thing that we didn't have time to do, she'll do something like this. I'll say the words, you say them back. Head, 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 head. Head, head, head. Very good. Ready? Watch me first. Head, 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 head. Head, 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 head. Good. My turn again. One more time. And then she'll put music on and have the children keep the steady beat that way. OK? So starting off with the word, the body part, where the beat's going to go, and starting off bilateral symmetrical, and then take it there. Right? So she has, it all, she has this very, very detailed system that's really nicely broken down. It's really easy for teachers to follow. So if you just do Phyllis Weikert, High School Press, music and movement activities, bang, you're going to get tons of stuff. Now, yeah. um, the other stuff, if you look here on that handout, if I may look at it for you. Um, uh, la, 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 la. 
on the page two there, uh, Feyerabend. I listed three things that John Feyerabend has, music for very little people, music for little people, and musical activities for early childhood. But he has published, I don't like selling books for people, right? But if you look up his name, you'll find a scad of materials that he has developed over the years. He's at the uh, University of Hartford in Connecticut, Hart, H-A-R-T-T. Um, and, and he does workshops all over the world on his stuff and, and sells tons. Um, same with Barbara Andrus, the first name there on the list. And then uh, the Music Together stuff I mentioned. And then um, the other names here, Valerio, Reynolds, Bolton, Taggart. Um, if you look up their names together or individually, you'll find that they have published numerous things over the years. So they've got also a number of materials. But once you do some of this stuff, like I said, I will take stuff, I will take rhymes and chants out of standard, you know, Mother Goose, Canadiana, wherever I find it. But very simple, the easier the poem or rhyme, the better it is for younger children, and the more repetitive, right? So I just saw I was going to do it with you, something like, out goes the rat, out goes the cat, out goes the lady with the big green hat, right? Simple, like, duh. But to, to think, you know, all I did when I made that one up was I saw, it was an illustration, it was a picture book, and it showed, uh, a rat, a cat chasing after it, and a lady with a big green hat, and she's holding on to her hat, and you know. So uh, how do we act this out? How do we dramatize this? How do we make it musical? The other thing I did a lot of while we were doing these activities was I was using my voice, even when we were speaking words, when we were chanting words, I was using my voice in the full range. So I was going, out goes the rat, out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. Let's try it together. Ready, go. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. Very good. Let's do it together. One. Let's do it two times in a row. Ready, go. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the big green Again. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the pink green again. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the pink green hat. And stop. Very good. That was great. Let's make a circle. Let's clap the short and long sounds of the words. I'll do it first. You do it back. Out goes the rat. So notice I have my hand here and this here. Why? Because eventually, in grade one and grade two, I'm going to have you do this. So here's the hand, here's the mallet. So that's why we're doing this. OK? So here's the next words. Out goes the cat. Out goes the cat. Good. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. Great, let's do the whole thing. Out goes the rat, out goes the cat, out goes the lady with the big green hat. Ready, go. Out goes the rat, out goes the cat, out goes the lady with the big green hat. Good, let's whisper the words and clap the short and long sounds of the words. Ready, go. Now let's just think the words and clap the short and long sounds of the words. Ready, go. Very good. I would like this side of the class to keep the steady beat, just like this. And I'd like this side of the group to clap the short and long sounds. Ready, go. And stop. Let's switch. Steady beat over here. Good. Let's clap the short and long sounds of the words. Ready, go. And stop. That's lovely. Fantastic. Okay, so we would do this. And then I'd say, okay, I would like every other person 
one. All the ones are going to do the motions that we did. Out, 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 lady. Okay? And the rest of you, you're going to play the short and long sounds of the words, which is called the rhythm. And I would like you to keep the steady beat. So the twos over here are going to do rhythm. Twos over here, steady beat. Ones are going to do the motions. Are you ready? You're going to get in here and you're going to mix it up. We're going to do it. Let's do it three times. Ready, go. Say the words this time. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady. Do it just the motions. And stop. So go back. Let's switch parts. OK? So And let's switch completely parts. People over here, you're going to play the rhythm. The twos are playing the rhythm. The twos are playing the steady beat now. And the ones are doing the motions. First time through, let's do it opposite. Let's do the words and motions, then just the motions, then the words and the motions. OK? Here we go. Out goes the cat. Oh, out goes the rat. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. Yeah, we did it opposite, sorry. And stop. Excellent. So that would take, with a, with a group of first, second graders, that's going to take you not one session. You wouldn't get that far in the first session. So that's usually, for me, the first part is learning how to do the chant with the motion and getting into it, and doing it three times, once with the words, once without the words, once with the words. OK, there's a five minute activity, done. Then let's go on to another song or another movement activity, et cetera. Okay, the next week we come together, that's when we do what we just did now with the rhythm patterns and the steady beat. The next week when we get together, or the next session that we do, now we're going to take the rhythm and the steady beat, and we're going to transfer them to wood blocks. So uh, raise your hand if you're a one. OK, fine. So one, let's do it this way. One. One, OK? And twos. Twos over here. Who's the twos? Two. Here's a two. So you get to hold this. Let me get a couple more here. Um, everyone else is going to do the motion. First time through, words. Second time through, no words. Third time through, words. <laughs> OK? We'll start it off with steady beat. And we'll do four steady beats. So it'll be beat, 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 and then we'll do the words with the motions. Okay? Here we go. I'll, I'll count you in. I'll say, mm, mm, ready, go. Wait. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the big green. No words. Oh, I'm sorry. Out goes the rat, out goes the cat, out goes the lady with the big green hat, and stop. And that's the end. Switch instruments. Somebody else take the instruments. Somebody who was dancing, take the instruments. So. Who, who wants to play? Who's, who are the, OK, here we go. Take one, take one, take one, take one. Here we go. Let's take some more. How about some more people here on the shakers? All right. Shaker, shaker, shaker. All right, here we go. Whoops. All right. So now we have rhythm on shakers and wood blocks. We have drums. Should we have another few drums? How about a tambourine? I like making kids laugh. 
that's the softest part to actually do that on because it, it can hurt your hand, right? So I usually will put it on my hip. Who would like to play the tambourine? Steady beat tambourine. Anyone? Come on. Here we go. All right. Um, everyone else is going to do the movement. Ready? Four steady beats to start. Four beats to start. Ready, go. Here we go. Oh, wait, wait. Stop. And stop. Four steady beats start, and after the four steady beats, then we do the rhythm. The rhythm comes in. Okay? Here we go. And out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the sleeve. No words. Out goes the rat. Out goes the cat. Out goes the lady with the big green hat. And stop. Excellent. So <clears throat> to get that together takes quite some time. So right now, the other thing I can add in here is I can talk about how music is put together. I can talk about form. So we have three parts so far, and I use shapes to represent the form. Triangle, circle, triangle. So when you see the triangle, that's when we do the words, the movement, and the music. The circle is words and music, sorry, music and movement, no words. So I can extend the form then by using these shapes, correct? So I can use the triangles, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, what would that be? So all the kids know what that is just by looking at it. And then we could have a square. What would the square be? Mm, what could we do with the square? How about just movement, right? Just movement. So square is just going to be movement. And then we could do something where down the road we have to add some sort of melodic part. So how do we develop a melody? It's going to be very simple. It's going to come from the patterns that you sing. So you could do... Um, Out goes the rat, out goes the cat, out goes the lady with the big green hat. Very simple. Have the children go off with xylophones and make up a song. Tell them you can only use three notes. Or whatever rule you want to give them to keep it simple. And then have them come back with that so we could sing it and have a song part of it as well. And then after that, we could also have some sort of an accompaniment with the bigger xylophones, but that's a whole other story, it's a whole other course. <laughs> but something as simple as this, I hope, you I hope that with the smattering of things, the mosh that I did today, you see that um, there's a lot that would get us, we need to do to get us to a point where we can do this kind of thing. Now we did something with lady and hat and, and a rat and a cat, but could we just as easily have done this using something like leaves falling down, falling to the ground, or leaves falling down, falling to the ground. Fall has come, winter, snow, snow is on the ground, or something like that, right? So now I'm just going to play off of this little simple rhyme, and I'm going to turn it into a winter-themed activity. And what can I do with that winter themed activity when I build it up into a full blown performance like we've just been adding to here? This is my Christmas concert. <laughs> You're laughing. Why? This is, it makes sense. It is. It's just simple. It's the kids know how to do it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's something that they understand and it's taking from the skills that they already have. You're not going to lose hair like I did over many years. <laughs> Right? Trying to dream up these amazing performances. Once someone finally said to me, Peter, why are you knocking yourself out? Why are you doing this? Just do the things you're doing in the classroom. They're brilliant. The kids love it. All, all the parents want to see is what their children do. <laughs> right? That's why they're there. They're not there to see some, you know, 
whatever that you put together. So it's so you know you're keeping it within the skill levels, the understandings that children have, and and actually have them write the words, have them compose the words, right? Have them draw, paint a set, or something. I I can't tell you how many times I use simple simple stories like uh, simple story books. Um, Fish is fish. Do you know that book, Leone? Pardon? No, Leone. Um, yeah. Leo, Leo, Leo. yeah, Leo Leone, yeah. Fish is fish, and that is that. So that word, those words, fish is fish, and that is that, kept coming back. Oh, man, the art teacher did fish with the kids, and then we had, like, an ocean backdrop, and the kids painted this blue blah, right? <laughs> of course, it kind of looked like a blue blah, but it was the ocean, right? And everybody thought it was cool. I thought it was cool, too. We had a great time, and the parents loved it. And the grade twos performed it for the grade ones and the kindergarten kids. And then they did it in the evening for the parents. Everybody was groovy. <coughs> Keep it simple. Keep it within your realm. Right? Find those simple chants and rhymes and do this kind of thing with it. I appreciate you coming today and sharing uh, your, your energy and participating as enthusiastically as you did. And I hope that something has come out of this for you. Thanks.